advising clients across the country. Here he is, your host, Jay Christopher Boyd. This is Jeff Curry sitting in for Chris Boyd for this segment on Something More with Chris Boyd. And I'm really excited to talk to this next guest. I'm a big baseball fan, and I lived in Sandwich and Bourne for a very long time. I'm on, in Florida right now and attended many, many games. I'll put it out there, Bourne Braves fan, in case uh, this becomes an issue during our, <laughs> our conversation. Um, but I'm very happy to have with us Chris Fitzgerald, who's the general manager of the Falmouth Commodores, which is the Falmouth team in the Cape Cod Baseball League. And we're going to talk about all things Cape Cod Baseball League. It is summer after all, and summer if on Cape Cod, if, if you're listening and you're a tourist, you're just visiting and you haven't checked out the Cape Cod Baseball League, you should do so. And if you're a resident, um, you probably know about it and you should remind yourself about what a uh, asset it is to the Cape Cod community. Chris, thanks for, thanks for joining us to talk all things Cape Cod Baseball. Oh, thank you for having me. So how, how did you get this awesome position you know you think about things like you'd like to do someday and uh be the general manager of a uh of a baseball team that's in a league like the cape cod baseball league before we get into what you know some of the details about the league how did you find yourself in this position how did you get that lucky well um yeah you know, I, I was born and raised in falmouth um so I would just, you know, always went to the games. And uh, after college, I was actually coaching, um, you know, Little League Baseball in Falmouth and then sure. started coaching at uh, Sandwich High School and then took over the uh, Sandwich Post 188 American Legion baseball team. Um, and uh, while I was doing that, uh, the, the former GM for Falmouth, Eric Zamuda, uh, was uh, taken over as the new commissioner for the league. And yep. uh, they needed a new GM in Falmouth, and they called me up, uh, asked if I was interested, and uh, that's it. That's all she wrote. How long did it take you to say yes? <laughs> I slept on it for about yeah. 24 hours. Uh, I, I knew the commitment it took right. uh, to do it, and I just wanted to make sure that uh, you know I was able to to commit to it uh, before I before I jumped in. So, what is the general manager of a? Um team of, for the Cape Cod Baseball League. There's 10 teams, right? 10 teams there right is, across yep, the Cape? Ten, yep, 10 teams, five in each division, east and west. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, what, what <laughs> it's, it's kind of a year-long uh, process, I should say. Uh, you know, during the off-season, we're, we're really, there's a lot of meetings uh, between the, the franchises, the GMs, uh, the coaches, uh, the league. And then, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of just putting our, our roster together. Uh, we start signing players up in September. And uh, so for, that, for people who don't know, these players come from uh, the college ranks. They're all from a variety of NCAA schools, right? Yes. Yeah. So they're, the Cape League uh, is like the, the, the best of the best in college baseball. Um, you know, I think the last stat was one out of every six MLB players uh, played in the Cape League at one point. Wow. Um, you know, we have, you know, we we just had 26 players uh, drafted in the 2023 draft that played for Falmouth at one point. So, um, I mean, That's they're they're pr- high quality. Impressive. Yeah, it's it's about as close to a professional game as you could probably get, uh, other than you know, like Team USA or something sure. like that so so um, these these players are playing in various schools across the country and obviously schools colleges aren't in session in the summer so there's a variety of leagues across the country correct that are, are attempting to you said the word draft is that an accurate term i mean like are you out there like researching scouting these players and trying to persuade them to come to cape cod how does all that how does all that function so we, we get names from, uh, from college coaches uh, that want to place their players up here on the Cape um, from uh, advisors, uh, from scouting directors. Uh, giving parents, us, maybe. You know, sometimes parents, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, we, get a, we get a lot of names coming, coming our way. Um, so, you know, we just kind of 
filter them out and, and see, you know, who would be the best fit. Uh, we have a lot of great connections with a lot of, uh, you know, power five schools. Um, you know, a lot of guys from, you know, Oregon state, UCLA, uh, Texas A&M, you know, a lot of those guys get here. Um, but I mean, quite honestly, we have, we have players that from Wheaton right now on the team. So it's, it's both, it's a great combination of both local and uh, regional. You know? Is there a, is there like a formal draft or is this like a kind of a one-on-one -on -one recruiting talking just. Yeah. It's yeah. It's just recruiting. There's no, there's no draft. And um, you know, the, the roster is constantly changing um, mm -hmm. even during the season. Um, you know, we, we're, the roster's capped at 30 players. Um, so you can't have more than 30 on the roster. Uh, during the summer, the beginning of the season, you know, we have a lot of uh, temp players <laughs> that um, step in for players that are <clears throat> either in uh, regionals or super regionals or Omaha. Um, so we have these temp players that come in and kind of fill spots waiting for the other guys to come in. Um, so we have a lot of turnover sometimes. I think right now we're up to... Uh, I want to say it's 35 players that have been released at one point. So, wow. yep. yeah. And so do, so when a player makes the commitment to come to play, say for the Falmouth Commodores for the summer, is that a one year commitment? Is it like every year you have to start new? Yep. Every year you start new. Wow. Um, wow. You know, there's, there's, you don't really take any, well, you, you might take a few draft eligible guys in the beginning of the season, uh, like we kind of did this year and some of the other teams did this year uh, with the understanding that, you know, they're, they'll be gone by the draft. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, you just kind of have to spot fill uh, <laughs> the, the rest of the roster. Um, but, uh, yeah. Well, what was the, what was the question again? Sorry. I, I was just asking if their players are with you for the one year or do they repeat? Do you have, do you have returning players as they go through their college years? Yeah, sometimes, uh, you know, if we get a player their freshman year, uh, or I should say after their freshman year, uh, you know, they'll likely come back or at least get an invite uh, for their sophomore year. Uh, if they're not draft eligible sophomores, um, you know, they usually come to us or, you know, they'll go team USA sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, if they don't get drafted after their junior year, um, sometimes we have those guys come back as well. I think, uh, you know, we had uh, one of our players this year, Antoine Jean um, from Alabama. He was with us in 2019. So, uh, yeah, it, well, never it, was, know. it was the, co the COVID year in between, which kind right. of threw a wrench into things. But So you missed a whole season. We did. Yeah, we had to shut shut that season down, unfortunately. That's too bad. But we man. came back, uh, you know, full steam ahead, which was great. So tell us about the season after you go through this whole process, which sounds a bit chaotic and uh, challenging to, to get a roster together from, from, I say kids, young men across the country. Um, tell us about the season, how that unfolds and how many games and yeah, so the season's 44 games. Uh, it starts in early June, uh, runs through July, uh, and then playoffs usually start first week of August. And, uh, you know, the championship usually wraps up around August 12th. Um, so it's it's pretty quick, 44 games, uh, 22 home, 22 away. Um, you know, some of the obstacles, you know, uh, the high school season is still kind of, going so all the teams play at the local fields um right. so many of our fields that we play at are, are the local high school fields um so sometimes you know you have to deal with high school teams that are that are in their tournaments um and playoffs um, but it's it's a great uh you know it's a great companionship that the that the teams and the league has with uh, the local baseball teams high school teams so while we've never done this, I do have uh, many friends, several friends, more than I can remember, I'm sure, who have hosted. They served as a host family because these young men are coming from all over the country and there's no central living accommodations, right? The league and Falmouth rely on the goodwill of individuals to take these players into their homes, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, we wouldn't have a league if it wasn't for the host families. Um, you know, I think the, whoever is in charge of each franchise's placement of, of players and recruiting host families are the heart and soul of the league. Um, cause without those, those individual volunteers, you know, none of this happens. Um, but it's, it's such an awesome opportunity. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I wanted a I wanted a player staying with us so I could play catch with him and, and learn from him. And it was, you know, it's, it's really awesome. Um, you know, these, these relationships that the players make with these host families for, you know, those 44 games, uh, sometimes even less are, are actually lifetime, you know, friends. Um, you know, a lot of them get invited to weddings. Uh, you know, they get, uh, you know, birthday cards, Christmas cards, stuff oh, like that. I, so it's, you, you I, meet them for a little bit and, and they're lifelong friends. They're I almost can, family. I can attest to that. We have some good friends, Peter and Lois Wack, um, who lived in Sandwich. He was the police chief, actually. Um, and they took players in from, for Born for the Born Braves. And uh, I see them on social media now. He's retired as well. And he's, uh, they're traveling to visit their players. They go to their college games they're talking about you know waiting to see if they're going to be drafted and so they that's your testimony that they lifelong it is it's accurate it's yeah a it's, relationship. it's it's so special and um you know I, I think when you if you go to a game and you watch these guys play um you know they're they look like grown men they play like professional baseball players but when you when you get to talk to them and really get to know them and most of them are still kids, you know, 19 yeah. years old, 20 Absolutely. years old, uh, really experiencing all this craziness of, of baseball firsthand. And um, it's it's fun to kind of go through that process with them. And they're they... away from home as well. I mean, this this they probably traveled with the team before, but being away for the summer may be the longest period that they've been away from their their parents and their structure as well. Oh, absolutely. I, you know, a lot of the guys have, have never even set foot on the East coast before, let alone the Cape Cod or Massachusetts. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a new experience for them. Um, some of them have never lived away like out of the state before. Um, so they're, they're appreciative and, you know, excited to kind of take in a new, new location and new part of the world. And, um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. So for the people who haven't experienced a game, um, tell you told us about 44 games in the season and 22 home and away, 10 teams. We kind of get the broad picture. The teams are spread across the Cape from Upper Cape, Mid Cape to Lower Cape. So wherever you are on Cape Cod, there's not a team too far away from you. Um, yeah. how, does the, yeah. how does the season end? How are the, uh, there's a playoff, there's all-star games. Tell us some more about the, what happens in the league during the season. Sure, absolutely. Um, so yeah, there's there's ten teams. Uh, you got the Born Braves, Brewster Whitecaps, Katua Kettleers, Chatham Anglers, Harwich Mariners, Hyannis Harbourhawks, Orleans Firebirds, Wareham Gateman, YD Red Sox, and the Found Commodores. Um, so yeah, a uh, couple of the highlights during the season. Uh, we usually have a like a Fenway workout uh, with all the players where we get to go to the Fenway Park and take batting practice and infield outfield and shag wow. balls and do some testing on the field. And it's, it's a highlight for a lot of those guys. Cause sure. you know, some of them won't get the opportunity to, to play on, you know, in, in a major league park. Um, so they, they really appreciate that. Um, you know, and then some of the guys uh, get noticed there, to be honest with you. Uh, I was talking to the New York Yankee scout, and uh, he said that when Aaron Judge took BP at Fenway during the Fenway workout is when they said, we got to get this guy. Wow. Um, so it's it's a great opportunity for those guys. And, you know, all the volunteers um, across the Cape uh, for the Cape League are invited to to watch and go, go to Fenway Park and sit in the stands and, and watch these guys at Fenway. So that's a real fun opportunity. Um and then we have All-Star Game this year. All-Star Game is July 22nd in Harwich. Um, so that's going to be an awesome event. Uh, they have a home run derby before. And, <laughs> you know, you, you're, you, again, you're talking about the best of the best on the Cape. We're the best of the best 
in college baseball. So it's a, it's a really great game. Uh, you know, probably 95 to 99% of those guys are going to be major league baseball players one day, wow. you know, within the next two to three years. So it's, it's fun. Um, you know, it's, it's great baseball. Um, so I would highly recommend if you haven't been to an all-star game to, to go check that out. Um, and then, yeah, the, you know, for this year, our last game of the regular season is August, August 2nd, uh, and then playoffs start August 4th. And, uh, you know, the top four teams from each division, um, make the playoffs and, uh, it's a two out of three and, uh, that's about it. Yeah. So we keep dig into that a little bit more for people who haven't been to a game. Uh, tell us about the cost of attending a game. So all games, uh, across the Cape are free. Um, I believe the all-star game is, uh, I want to say $10, mm-hmm. um, to get into, but, um, yeah, all Cape league games are free. So we just, uh, we just ask for a donation at the gate and, uh, you know, we do 50, 50 and all that fun stuff. Um, it's a great environment for kids. Um, if you're looking to bring a family for a couple hours, sit outside in the sun and watch some, you know, some of the best baseball players in the country play for free. Uh, that's, you know, can't ask for anything better than that. No, absolutely not. And it's, it's a great, it's a great time and people really should check it out if they haven't. It, is it, am I correct that this season is a special season? Meaning is it a, does it mark an anniversary? Yeah, uh, yes, it does. So this is our hundredth uh, year, and wow. uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, so Falmouth is one of the the original teams. So Falmouth is also celebrating its hundredth year. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it. I mean, Cape Cape League baseball is is part, ingrained in the history of uh, of the Cape as anything else. Um, you know, you you think of Nantucket, you think of uh, you know, the, the whalers and, uh, you think of Cape Cod, you think of Cape league baseball. So certainly um, do. yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. And again, yeah, if you haven't been, it's, you know, everyone says it's a Norman Rockwell esque <laughs> yeah. environment. Absolutely. What it is. Do you know any of the history of how it was founded or why it was founded or who founded it or. Yeah. I, so my understanding is uh, after after the Civil War, uh, it's kind of when baseball was was really invented, and um, they would play baseball games in in the uh, uh, battlefields. Uh, and when they came back, um, some of the local Cape Cod Cape Cod guys brought this game back, and they started playing. And um, I believe uh, Sandwich was actually the first location for a Cape League game um, on the Cape, and local local uh, guys just started these teams and started playing and then um i believe that was in 1886 if i'm not mistaken um and then the uh, cape cod baseball league was officially formed um in 1923 awesome awesome so when i was uh, growing up i remember going to the cape cod baseball games i used to go to wareham and Bourne games that was kind of a rivalry back then. Uh, probably still mm-hmm. is today. Still is, yeah. Oh, yeah. Abs- absolutely. Um, and I remember Thurman Munson being the name that was always touted as, did you know that Thurman Munson, right? So for those who don't know, a famous, very successful, uh, tragic ending in his life, but a very uh, accomplished major league catcher for the New York Yankees. Uh, played in the Cape Cod Baseball League. You must have other names of major league players that we would know who have oh, yeah. uh, spent some time. Yeah, some, yeah. Do, I mean, do grow, some bragging. growing up for me, <laughs> <laughs> growing up for me, it was always, uh, you know, Nomar Garcia Parra, Jason right. Baratek, and Mo Vaughn played, Red Sox played players, in the Cape. Right. right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's Frank Thomas was another big name. I think that was probably the biggest name uh, that we had at least that I can remember. Um, but even, even recently, you know, this past draft, Paul Skeens from LSU, he was the first overall draft pick in the 2023 draft. He played for Wareham last year. Um, you know, in 2017, we had Adley Rutschman who played for the Falcons. He was the number one overall pick who's now currently the starting 
uh, catcher for the Baltimore Orioles and was just in the home run derby. Uh, fun fact, uh, Adley Rutschman did not have the best summer here on the Cape, but uh, <laughs> it still ended up being the number one overall pick. Um, I think, yeah, Adley Rutschman batted 164 wow, and didn't have a single home run. Um, while I was on the Cape. Go figure, right? And then a few, a few years <laughs> later, he's in the home run derby. So go, go figure. Yeah, no, it's, you know, I think the, the big thing in the draw for a lot of these colleges uh, to send their players to the Cape is, you know, the Cape League was one of the first leagues to, to play with wooden bats. Um, so all these MLB teams wanted to see how these, these players could handle the bats, the wooden bats, and get a good feel and understanding before the draft. So uh, that's when all these top colleges started to send their best guys here so that they could get discovered and drafted. Um, and then the close proximity too. Um, you know, I think that the furthest distance is Wareham and Chatham or Orleans. And right. I mean, that's, that can't be more than an hour and a half. Well, depending on when you hit the bridge, but, right. um, <laughs> but you, you look at some of these other, these other summer leagues, um, you know, they're traveling. Yeah. They're really spread eight, out. Yeah. Eight, 12 hour road trips just to get from one place to another. So a lot of the scouts really appreciate being able to, to come to the Cape and, <laughs> you know, check out these guys and yeah, they can check three work. games. Not a bad work excuse to hang out at the Cape and watch for oh, some yeah. prospects. That's right? it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, they can, you know, they can check out a, a game in Katuit at, five and then head over to Falmouth at six and then head over to Bourne at, you know, seven. And sure. they just saw six teams. Awesome. So. so in addition to attending, uh, other, is there any way online that you can watch a game if you want to check one out? Yeah. So, so all of the uh, Cape League teams uh, stream their games for free. Um, most of them have a YouTube channel that you can go to. Um, if you want, you can also go to uh, d1baseball.com and they have a list of all the links uh, for the Cape League games that you can click and watch. Um, each each home team has a live video feed and uh, each away team has an audio feed. So depending on who you're rooting for, uh, you can listen appropriately or watch appropriately. Chris, I really, I really appreciate your time. You're bringing back. I didn't, I didn't reflect that this would happen, but you're bringing back some memories of my childhood going to those games, um, and you know, for for me anyway, and I'm sure it's still happening today. Me and my friends were just trying to get autographs and catch baseballs, <laughs> uh, but it's, uh, it was a part of our summers. And if you haven't been to one of these games, you should really check it out. If you have, uh, if you have children or visitors, it's something very inexpensive, free donation um which you should make as well but it's a very low cost night of entertainment or day of entertainment so chris fitzgerald Absolutely. from the falmouth commodores thanks so much for your time today i appreciate it thank you for having me and to the listeners thanks for tuning in to another episode of something more with chris boyd this is jeff perry sitting in for chris and chris will be back in the big seat next time in the meantime if you need to reach us you can check out our website at amrfinancial.com or you can call our office at 508-771-8900. Until next time, keep striving for something more. You're listening to Something More with Chris Boyd, Financial Talk Show. Asset Management Resources, LLC, and J. Christopher Boyd, CFP, provide investment advice on an individual basis to clients only. Proper advice depends on a complete analysis of all facts and circumstances. The information given on this program is in the nature of general financial comments and cannot be relied upon as pertaining to your specific situation. AMR, LLC, cannot guarantee that using the information from this show will generate profits or ensure freedom from loss. Listeners should consult their own financial financial advisors or conduct their own due diligence before making any financial decisions.